In this video, I want to talk about marginal cost, marginal revenue, and marginal profit. So um, marginal basically is just this is an application of the derivative to these business applications uh, or these business concepts. Um, so what do we mean by marginal cost or marginal revenue? Um, let me just begin with giving you a profit function to see what we mean by marginal, I'll give you an example. All right, so um, I'm going to let this be the profit as a function of x, where I like cycling. So I'm going to think about this being a profit function for a bicycle manufacturer. All right, so, um, for, so x is the number of bicycles that they sell. So we would have, the, this is the function, so 0 0.0002 x cubed plus 6.3, whoops, that's not what I wanted, plus 10x, all right? So this says that um, if I sell x bicycles, then this would dictate or predict my profit um, for selling x bicycles. So for example, let's say I sell 100 bicycles, all right? Then it would be 0 0.0002 times 100 cubed plus 10 times 100, all right? And if you were to do out the math on that, you would find that the profit would be $1,200 for selling 100 bicycles. Um, what I'd like to point out here, though, is that this is an increasing function. So if we were to graph this, I'll just draw a quick sketch of a graph over here. We know if we sell zero, our profit is zero, right? Zero plus zero. But this is going to bend ever so slightly because this is a really small number in front of the x cubed. We'd expect the x cubed to kind of increase quickly, but because this number is so small and this part is linear, right? This is like a line with a um, slope of 10. So it's going to bend up ever so slightly, so maybe something like this. All right, so it starts at zero and it's bending upward. So we see that it's an increasing function, all right? So that so the, the profit is not constant, right? It's increasing. Um, in addition, the profit for the, um, the bicycles, for selling, for example, 100 bicycles, um, the 101st, the profit for the 101st bicycle um, is going to be more than the profit for the 100th bicycle. One way to see this is let's look at the profit for 200 bicycles. All right, so again, we'll put in 0. 0.00002 times 200 cubed plus 10 times 200, and that would give us a profit of 3,600. All right. So if we look at our average profit, the average profit per bicycle for the first hundred. So this is average profit is the the profit for x number of bicycles over the number of bicycles that we've sold. That gives us the average profit per bicycle. So for p, the profit, the average profit for the first hundred bicycles is twelve hundred over one hundred, or twelve dollars per bicycle. All right, but the average profit for two hundred bicycles is the thirty six hundred that we add up here over two hundred bicycles. That's eighteen dollars per bicycle. So the more bicycles we sell, the better profit we're going to make per bicycle. Now, again, this is an average over all 200, right? The question is, how could I find out what the profit I will make on the 201st bicycle, all right? So one way to do that without using calculus is just to say, well, let's find the profit made on 201 bicycles, all right? The total profit made if we sell 201 bicycles minus the total profit made if we sell 200 bicycles, all right? So it makes sense then that that would give us just the profit we made on the 201st, 
all right? So without going through all these computations, again, I can tell you the profit. So if we put in 201 here, we would get $3,634.12. We already know that that's 3,600 from above. So the profit made on the 201st bicycle would be $34.12. Now again, that's much higher than this because this is averaging over all of the first 200 bicycles. Um, so the average, when you make just one bicycle, for example, your average, your profit is, is very small, right? If you look at this, this is for, if you put in one here, this is just about zero. And then you put in one here and that's 10. So you're basically only making about $10 profit on your first bicycle. But the more you make, the more profit you get. Because this includes all 200, it's 18. But if I just look at the 201st, I, it's, my profit is $34.12. Now, how can we use calculus to estimate this? So one way to think about this is if I'm, let's look at here, if we have, here's, let's say here's 200, and right next to it, that's 201. All right, so remember we said that for average rate of change, we could estimate that. <laughs> Um, or the, not estimated, but it's, it's given by the secant line, right? So the secant line that goes through those points looks something like that. So the slope of that secant line gives me the average rate of change um, of profit, right? So this is my profit. Here's X, my number of bicycles. Um, that, that would give me the basically the average profit from 200 to 201, all right? But notice if I put in right at 200, I put in a, a tangent line. So something like this, all right? It would be, it, it's hard to distinguish these two lines. And that's the point, is that if you take the average rate of change over a very small interval, then it, it's about the same as the instantaneous rate of change. All right, that's kind of the point here. These, the slope of the secant line gives me the average rate of change. The slope of the tangent line gives me the instantaneous rate of change. So over a small interval, the average rate of change is approximately the same thing as the instantaneous rate of change. So one way to think of that then is the derivative of profit, the slope of the tangent line at 200, so the derivative of profit at 200, so let's say the profit function, if we take the derivative right at 200, that should be approximately the same as the average rate of change, P of 201 minus P of 200 over 201 minus 200, right? So here's average rate of change from 200 to 201. Here's my instantaneous rate of change right at 200, all right? And they should be approximately the same, all right? Again, we see this here graphically. We can also, now I wanna show. So this right here, actually, the reason where, where this is all going is that that is my marginal profit, all right? In other words, we can basically use the derivative to estimate this the cost, in this case, the cost of the, or the, the profit of the 200, that we would make off the 201st bicycle. So let's see how we would do that. So here's our, our function up here. So P prime of X should be 0 0.0006 X squared plus 10. Derivative 10 X is just 10, all right? So what is P prime of 200? All right, in other words, this is, another way to interpret this is, this is the instantaneous rate of change of profit right at 200 bicycles, which is the same, which is basically equivalent to saying the cost uh, or the, the profit made off of the 201st bicycle. Profit is changing. This is the instantaneous rate of change of profit. It tells us how the profit is changing right at 200 bicycles. And if we put that in 0 0.0006 times 200 
squared plus 10, we, we get, actually, so this turns out to be 24 plus 10, or $34. You see that this is a very good estimate of what we got when we found exactly using this, this difference. So that's the idea behind the marginal, is that we can use marginal, whether it be marginal profit, marginal cost, marginal revenue, to find out how these quantities, cost, revenue, and profit, are changing right at one specific point. All right. So let me just give you um, one more example using marginal cost. All right. So just another example here. Let's say we're going to have cost. This is an inventory, annual inventory cost, where Q is the order size when the inventory is replenished. All right. So let's say we're storing a lot of stuff. We have a certain amount of inventory. It costs a certain amount of money to store that inventory. All right, and we're going to the, the equation or the function we're going to use here.